Tasha, you planned your own wedding. Yes, I did. Tell me about that. Well, it was so unorganized that I think all of my guests were wishing that we had hired a wedding planner. Now, you definitely would have hired a wedding planner if you could, right? I, in retrospect, I would have. I would have found the budget in order to have done so. I just needed help. I needed an extra set of hands, somebody to help me out, do things, take charge of things because I was doing it all and directing people. And it was, it was very stressful. Mm -hmm. Wedding planning was very laid back and chill for me up until one day before the wedding. And I had a meltdown and my husband almost didn't come to the altar. It was that bad. Wow. Yep. Wow. <laughs> and how about you? And it's funny because I we talked in, in the past about how you had a really, you know, tiny wedding planned on a shoestring budget. And my wedding was a much larger wedding. That's right. Um, bigger budget. And I didn't have an event planner. But you're generally a very organized person. I am. I am. But I was still stressed nonetheless. <laughs> okay. um, probably would have had an event planner for at least a certain part of the planning process. How do you think it would have benefited you? Less stress, just not to think about certain things. Okay. Today is an important day because we're going to actually have um, a conversation with Amanda Hughes, who is an event planner, because I'm really interested to know, you know, what her processes are, what, you know, what she does and how she helps these brides kind of get through. That's right. And why you would or would not consider an event planner. Exactly. And everything that's involved. I think that there's so many things involved in event planning that people don't even think of. Exactly. Welcome to our podcast. So, you're engaged. Now what? Hi, guys. Today we have a special guest. She's a wedding planner, event planner and coordinator, stylist, health and relaxation guru, and author of Smiling Through the Chaos of Wedding Planning. Please welcome Amanda Hughes. Hi, Amanda. Hi. I always sing hi, and I'm not a singer. <laughs> <laughs> I do the same. Do you ever get that voice when you're in a restaurant, you need something, and all of a sudden it's an octave higher than you I tr- need? I try to just put my hand up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the voice. <laughs> Welcome. And, and I had forgotten to mention that you're also a mom of two. Yeah, of two, two boys and two stepgirls. So, yep. You busy, have busy. Very, yeah. Thank you yes. very much for coming on. Yes, thanks for having me. What services do you offer? So with wedding planning, I have several services. So I have exclusive planning, which means that they book me for the entire weekend. So it's rehearsal, dinner, it's brunch, it's wedding. It's for cultural weddings, sometimes a few days of planning. And then I have full planning, which is start to finish, including the day off. And then month of coordination, which is four to six weeks before the big day. They hire me and we go through the timeline and I become the contact for vendors. And then on any of those services, I'll do hourly consultation as well. And then I also have partial. So for example, I have a client right now who hired me for a month of coordination plus everything decor. Oh, wow. So signage, flowers, anything that they will see except for the food. (laughs) Let's break it down a little bit, if if we can. Yeah, Just from somebody who did not have a planner for my yes. wedding. Yes. I don't, Jean did neither. Mm-hmm. So let's start with full-fledged, we just got engaged. Yes. What's next? We have no idea. Let's involve right. Amanda. Right. So if they are getting you for the entire process of their planning yes. from start through the wedding night, yeah. what's involved? So you would make that phone call to me. Or email me, and we'd have a conversation at some point, whether it's a few emails in or you'd call me and we'd speak directly about it. But I would get involved from the very start. So we'd go see a few different venues after I showed you some options and made sure that they were available around the dates that you offer me as options. And then we would go dress shopping and we would talk about just everything that you want involved from the very start. And I would contact all the different vendors that you want involved. So whether that's video, photography, florist, um, extra entertainment, which can be really fun, um, signage and all the extra decor, I get started on that later. But any bookings I want to do from the start. So you have your options. And do you have relationships with vendors that you have a history with or are you always is it always an open book for you where you are researching who's hot on the market for makeup? Who's hot on the market for photography? 
and let me look into them, get a relationship with them yeah. going? That's, or do you have your go-to? a good question. Okay. That's a, so both. Mm-hmm. I have my go-to people who I know and trust, and I know they do great work. I know we work well together, and I know the day of they are that warm personality that I want there. I I love creating these teams for people who are nice and create quality work. They're not just one or the other. Um, I also am always about meeting new people, and if there's um, new types of products out there or um, they're offering something unique, a different unique service, then why not get to know them as well and see how it is. And, and I, I would imagine as an offering. Right. And I would imagine that you probably, I, at least with like most of your clients, maintain relationships with them. I'm sure that, do they use you for future events too? Yeah. after their wedding. That's cool. So if they let me in, which most clients do, um, we create really great relationships. And I've been told that I become part of the family, which is amazing. And sometimes I'm like, I miss you guys. And I'll just email them. How are you doing? Um, and future events. Yes. Well, totally. I, I mean, the, the question for me was generated mm-hmm. when you said that, um, you know, we go dress shopping and right. that's a really personal thing. Usually yes. girls will go with their moms or, I mean, do the moms attend? Do they go with you usually? They usually do. Okay. And I try to read people. So I am very much about watching body language and watching the client and seeing if they're getting stressed out and seeing who's stressing them out. Right. If there is someone, um, usually it's a few people there. There are a few people there. So <laughs> right. um, I, sometimes I'll go into the dressing room for a second and I'll just be like, how are you doing? Do you want me to, you know, try to guide them one way or another, like a little bit, just try to make the experience as positive as possible. But before we even go, I talk to the bride about how many people she wants there and try to minimize it to a few people if we can. So you're very involved. So at this very. level, you're extremely involved yes. with the aesthetic of the wedding. I would imagine that budget would be one of the very first things that, that were brought up. Do you say, what's your entire budget for the wedding? Right. Do you say, are you, are you at this level? Are you at this level? So that you know what you have to work with. I do. And it's so funny because I would love it if I got straight answers on that. But most people don't know. They don't know. They, they don't know who's contributing what they're like, when they I get think- engaged. You know, we, I mean, I don't know how much things are. Like, how much do you think we should spend? Or, and oftentimes it gets doubled because they think that they should spend this. And then all of a sudden they get a family member offering $20,000 or, and they, it, it rises. Um, so I try to have that conversation at the start. But if they really don't know, then I say, well, if I was getting you a photographer, would you want, would you feel comfortable spending 2000 or 20000 And then I get a good idea from them of what sure. range I can go with. With aesthetic, mm-hmm. have you had ever had completely different views as a client where their taste is just not aligning with your vision of the day? And how do you handle that? Yeah, a few times, I think. Um, usually, I hope that someone's coming to me because they appreciate my creativity and design aesthetic. But I do try to go with what their vision is. As long as it's tasteful. And I have a client right now who look, that we're doing a bridal shower. And she was saying, let's do, it's very themey. And it was starting to be too juvenile, in my opinion. So I said to her, I think we should go this route instead and it will still look great. You will love it. It'll be unique. It just won't have that juvenile feel that you don't want. And she was You're like, honest. yeah, oh, I have, I mean, that's, that's how I roll in general. But she, if they trust you, they know that you're looking out for their best interest. And that's what I'm doing. I mean, that's the relationship. So then you go in the, a little bit more tasteful direction where other people will enjoy as well. Not just about that one person. I think that gets lost sometimes in weddings, especially, is that, the client says, well, this is what I like, especially with music. And it's like, well, what do your guests like also? Because it's going to be everyone and everyone around you affects your mood. So if everyone's having a great time, you're most likely going to have a great time too. That's a great point. That's, that's wonderful to think about just in life in general too. <laughs> you know? I mean, even with food, I'll say, did you ask, do you know if anyone has food allergies? to know in advance. So you don't have that one person there complaining that day that they don't have anything to eat. 
It's just thinking ahead. Right. Like and, you open up their minds yes. to situations and questions. How could they even possibly have thought of things right. like that before? You're doing this all the time. Especially so. if they've never gotten married before. Right. How do you charge for your services ultimately? Mm-hmm. And how do you, um, you know, how does that get segued into the conversation initially? Is it ever uncomfortable? You know, is it ever, is it? I think it used to be. Okay. It's not anymore for me because it has to be discussed. So if they, sometimes people don't bring it up and they're like, so what's next? And I know they want to. They're trying to ask without asking because they feel uncomfortable. I just say that this is my, and this is the cost, this is the investment for the services that you're looking for, but I really want to get what they're looking for first. So they might not know. And sometimes they're like, can I do month of coordination plus hourly consultation? I'm like, sure. And then we'll talk about that. So I do a flat fee um, for full planning and for month of coordination. Partial, I'll do a flat fee, but I need to know what they're going to be including first. Got a it. package. I'll set up a package. Your boundaries them. of what yes. this entails. I'm all about communication and transparency. So I never want someone saying, oh, well, I didn't know. Or, and that's why my contract is like 10, 11 pages, <laughs> because it's just all laid out there. And there's open communication from the very, very start. So I don't do percentage because I just feel like from a fairness standpoint, I always put myself in people's shoes. If I made $100 million or if I made $1,000, why should I be charged differently for the same service? So if I'm providing the same service to everyone, it's just that fee and that's it. Yeah. And for full day planning, because that's mm-hmm. that's where we're at. Yes. What's your fee? Seventy two hundred. Okay. So seventy two hundred. And that is from day one yes. getting all of the vendors put together, dress shopping, vision, aesthetic, signage, then that leading up to the day, getting the flowers and the day of yes. mm-hmm. day of. What are some things that you do for day of clients? Or actually, let's backtrack. Month of was an option, right? Yeah, I don't do day of because I don't think you can do a good job. Month of, what are things involved and how do you step into the process? So right away, I ask for everyone's contact information. So the client has booked everyone. They might not have done the small signage and decor yet, but everyone who they've booked, I get that spreadsheet or I give them a spreadsheet for them to fill out whatever they, whatever's easiest for them. I always try to make it easiest for them. And I contact the vendors and I either do a Skype or an in-person or a phone call with them, get to know them, build a rapport, hear what their timeline would be for that day. So I'm not just, some planners have been known to be very pushy and bossy and like, this is what you're doing. And it doesn't make sense for that vendor. So I get involved with the vendors and um, create those timelines after they're talking to me about that. Go back and forth with them, seeing if it still works. Because sometimes there's conflict between what the photographer wants and the catering wants. And so you have to rework that. I've been dubbed the timeline queen because I love color coordination and making <laughs> it super simple for vendors to know what you're doing at what time. So like, Jean just, pink. Are Jean you like herself you, up a little bit? She got, she got very excited. <laughs> are you like this in your house too? Closets, I think I'm like this shoes, with everything. I mean, perfect. So I made my closet like um, I call it my Nordstrom closet because <laughs> the top shelf has shoes lined up like Nordstrom would. I grew up like loving Nordstrom. So, uh-huh. um, <laughs> so it just translated into your. <laughs> oh, it translates into everything. I mean, that's amazing. Fashion styling, right? Yeah, it all goes together. Awesome. So. And then I do a site visit with the client. So we try to make this in one appointment so it's super simple and convenient for them because a month is not a lot of time to schedule meetings. So we meet at the venue. We do a site visit, sometimes with the florist, sometimes without, or anyone else who needs to be involved. And we'll sit down and talk about how what they want for that day, what's really important for them. And then on the the... I try to have everything done like two weeks before, if not the week before, but nothing the week of. I want them to relax. I want them to get excited Mm -hmm. and not be stressing about anything. Is there a way that you sort of put a stamp on this and finalize things? Do you send them like like some sort of a form or 
basically this is like your your timeline. Let's yeah. review it together. I'll and send them their timeline in expire. a Word doc okay, as a PDF it. and in an email. Okay. So they could see it either way. And I'll say, what do you think before I send it out to everyone? And then they, I have to get their approval first. And then I'll send it out to all the vendors and say, you have till this date, X date, to let me know if there's any more changes. You know, sometimes I still get phone calls that day asking about things, but I try to make it where everyone, I get a confirmation and everyone has seen it and knows what's going to be happening that day. And the expectations are met. What is your fee for a month of? 2200 20, And same thing with travel, that if it's within the hour, it's included. And I see. Yep. Day of is included in month of and included in the full planning. Of course. So I work eight to 10 hours that day. I always work till the end of the event and then I go backwards Um, because I want to make sure that everything is going smooth right until the end and that everyone, vendors get their tips and get paid and I'm helping out with that and no one needs to worry about a thing. And then I move backwards and they can add on additional hours as well. I used to also have an extra investment for an assistant if someone wanted, but now I actually just include that for four to six hours the day off. Okay. And we talked a little bit about, you know, how you had mentioned when you were speaking about your contracts, how, you know, communication is very, very open with you. Yes. Um, I'm curious too, how you maintain this balance. Like, is there any limit to your, the communications that you have with your clients? The amount of times that right. somebody will call you in a day. I mean, right. you know, you're a mom, you know, you're, you're a wife. Like, how right. does that work for you? How do you have that conversation with your clients? So I have my hours in there too, but, um, I think my clients get to know that I, I'm definitely a type A personality and I do work a lot. Uh, and sometimes they'll get emails at midnight, but <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Um, I have to be cautious about the balance because I form these great relationships with the clients. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Sometimes they'll, and, and because I'm also a health counselor, so I'm used to listening and helping people and I want to be there for them. I have unlimited phone calls and emails in my contract to a point. So it has to be reasonable. I know that's such a legal term. But if it seems, if if I'm getting like five phone calls a day and 10 emails a day, then I have a conversation with them and then we need to start going into hourly, which really doesn't usually get there. But if I have the conversation, then at least they know, oh, we're starting to get there. Let me back. I don't just charge people. I'm not that person. What is your faith for, for the weekend of? For the full weekend exclusive? Correct. It's about sixteen thousand. So seventy two hundred for the entire process, getting yes. your vendors coordinated, dress shopping, yeah. flowers, attending appointments with them. Yeah. Then we have the month of yeah twenty two hundred twenty two hundred yeah, and then you attending the entire weekend and your services is sixteen thousand. Oh no no no. Okay okay. <laughs> so twenty two twenty two hundred yes. is month of coordination, which includes that day of. Oh, so it. that's four to six weeks of planning and then includes the day off. 7,200 is includes the day off, but includes the entire planning for the wedding. Okay. So that can start a year and a half before. It can start four months before. It doesn't matter to me. Okay. Um, and then sixteen about, about 16,000 mm-hmm. is if I am planning a wedding that's like three days long and I'm doing the rehearsal and their brunch and I see, because there, there are multiple events. They're taking events. me for that entire yes. weekend where I cannot book anybody else. I okay, see. that makes sense. Okay, so it's your time is 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 valuable. And let's talk about some of the different cultures that you've done. And uh, start right there. Have you done, uh, what are some of the more extreme cultures, which are multiple days? I love Indian weddings. Okay. I think they're super cool. And I love the bright colors and just um, incorporating family in a different way. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I love every wedding because I just make it each one unique. I, I actually wrote about this in my newsletter this, this month, but I grew up with a mother who we would go into store and someone would say, oh, do you like, what do you like? What are you looking for? And she's like, I just need something unique. I just need something special. And sometimes she would find it and sometimes she wouldn't. I'm that person too. So no wedding is the same as the next and or the, in the past. Each one is different. And I think Indian weddings and other cultures allow for that even greater flexibility. But it's so much more about the client than about the culture. Um, so I, you know, I had a client who wanted like black wedding dress. That's cool. That is not about a culture. It's just about that person and what they're looking for. 
Yes. And what's yeah. also really fun and interesting that I found, you know, working with, with couples from all different cultures over, over the years is that even though there's so many differences, it's funny how you can see so many similarities yes. in the relationships between mother, daughter, you know, yes. father, daughter. <laughs> and like, even though the cult, you know, there's so many different cultures, right. yet um, we all have the same, we all go through the same, uh, our, we all go have our, have the same paces, right? We all go, the, yes. go through the same paces when we're planning our wedding. And so. also one of the new statistics is that there's, so many cultures intertwining right now that it's not so black and white anymore where it's like, oh, this culture, this culture. There's so many different races and cultures marrying. It doesn't matter anymore. That's right. And also the traditional wedding of like the garter and the cutting of the cake, those are also not being done as much. So then you take away, if you keep taking away and adding, it all becomes one. And to me, love is love. And you, I love love. And that's why I love starting to do weddings years ago and um that's uh, an important yeah. point i my experience working with clients is everything becomes so much about the wedding the yes. actual day the yes. planning of and i hear the stress in their voice yes because planning a wedding on top of life is stressful mm-hmm. it's very challenging you're now taking on a full-time job on top of everything oh, yeah. so to to balance all of that so to keep the love mm-hmm. in the day. Yes. What are some things that, that you would suggest to some couples? So I learned this years ago that it can't just be about the wedding. And that part of why people should hire me is to keep that love going where they're not arguing or discussing the wedding constantly. I had around the holidays, I said to one of my clients, I'm like, so just discuss this now. So then you give me the answer. And then you guys just have the holidays just to have fun with each other. And don't think about wedding planning at all. And they're like, really? I'm like, yes, just enjoy each other. That is so cool that you just said that because I have found it's always that the most important component tends to just go by the wayside as the months go on. It's only one day that you're going to be having this. And yes, I know it sounds funny for a wedding planner because I think it should be the most amazing day. But I also think you have the rest of your life to live together. And you can't, if you're only talking about wedding planning for, let's say they're engaged for a year and a half. For a year and a half, and then you get married, you're like, oh, shoot, what do we talk about? Like, we've only talked about wedding planning. We don't even know each other anymore. That That's, is, yeah, not, you know what? That's key. I never, because me personally, I remember going through the process with my husband, and there were fights. There was nonsense. There was, I mean, I, it got to a point where he didn't even want to talk about it anymore. And it, I was obsessed. Right. <laughs> and you have this obsessed girl. You have a quiet, you know, groom-to-be. We're not speaking. And it's like, smile for the picture. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, we'll fight later. Look happy. You're like poking them in the rib in the face. <laughs> like, so it's very cool. That's a very good, uh, you know, um, that's a really good point. But it's also why getting a photographer who fits the personality of the client is really important also. Because if they are feeling a little bit like that, the, the photographer will help them relax. <laughs> very true. <laughs> What are some things that are not so obvious that come up with, oh, I should have had a planner because I didn't think of this and had I had a planner, it would have been solved. I think a lot of the details, so especially towards the end, they're like, oh, good. I booked everybody. I'm done. And I'm like, do you want to have a welcome sign? You know, what are you thinking for escort cards? Do you want to do a board? Do you want to have cards out? Do you want to have flowers? And they're like, oh, you know what? are my options. And they didn't think about that. Or a lot of people are just focusing on Pinterest. And I know Pinterest is amazing. (laughs) And it gives you some good ideas, but you can't just go off of Pinterest and what everybody else is doing. I'm the opposite of that. I I went into this one place one time and I said to myself, I'm never, I'm never working with them because they said to me, I said, can you do this? Like, can you do this kind of idea? And they said, what did you like on our website? And I was like, no, well, I was trying to make something custom. And they were like, oh, no, no, no. Like, just can you, this is like what's really popular. (laughs) And I'm like, no, I don't want what's really popular. I don't, what's the fun in that? You know, it's all about being creative and. And bringing your, bringing yourself into the wedding. I would imagine you have to always be very, um, I I mean, the the day of especially is such a high Mm -hmm. pressure day. Yes. Do you ever freak out? So I had an event a few weeks ago, and I think you have to just breathe and realize before you go into it that you have to be flexible. Nothing, 
ever goes exactly as the timeline says or as you think it's going to. So I had an event and there were supposed to be two speeches. That's what was in the timeline. And I think I had like 10 in the end. I I mean, I stopped counting. It was like, so I just ended up incorporating them in where it still flowed. And the maitre d' wasn't upset because the food was coming out and it all still flowed really nicely. The band leader and I were discussing constantly and it worked and nobody knew that it wasn't really supposed to be like that. Um, But the client wanted the speeches. So we just ended up incorporating. That happens sometimes at weddings. That happens at all types of events, especially with people wanting to talk. So one of the things I do in advance is I talk to the client about, do you want people just being able to get up and speak? Or do you want it set in stone? One wedding, we had it set in stone. But then the mother-in-law was like, no, this person's going to really be hurt. We really need to incorporate it. And we were already really tight on the timeline, but we made it work. You just have to make it work. In the end, it's one thing or a couple of things that, you know, somebody's either going to be really happy with you at the end of the day and really happy with their day, or they're going to be upset. That would be so important to have you there because you have so much experience with weddings. Right. So being in that position and having the plan get knocked right. off of according right. to the plan and have your stamp of validation to say, it's going to be okay. Yes. I promise. Yes. It's all going to be okay. I would imagine that that would be everything to a bride and on the day of. And who would those people have gone to also? That's what I think of. Like, if somebody wants to make a speech, who would they have just been taking the microphone or and then or going to the bride or groom or, uh, you know, what? <laughs> like, it could become chaotic. So I'll ju- I just breathe and realize flexibility. Which is not easy for a type A personality to just have this That's why I was asking yeah. that question. It's, yeah. It's a, it's I'm a planner. Yes. I, I, yes. Like, I, is that your biggest challenge then? To- that's probably my personality biggest challenge. Okay. Yes. Because your personality is your, you, that's what right. you bring into your job. So right. these are challenges. Okay. Because so that- I have to stay organized. Mm-hmm. I have to keep everything organized mm-hmm. and keep everyone happy while also dealing with moving parts. And that's even with, let's say, a vendor's lead, right? I don't want to bring that up to the client. That's part of why I'm there. As long as I can handle it and as long as they're not so late that they're affecting other parts of it, there's no reason for anyone else to be involved and I handle it. And and you have a very warm personality. You have a personality that when someone meets you right off the bat, they feel comfortable with you being able to guide. I would imagine them, <laughs> them being able to guide them and give advice and calm them down if mm-hmm. anything happens the day of, <laughs> I would feel very comfortable with Good. you. Thank you. I think that's important. My business name is Smiling Through Chaos. And it's so funny because anytime clients or vendors, I get so many comments about the name of the business because everyone's like, oh, yes, I get it. You know, you have to smile through it. The only problem is that a lot of people can't spell chaos. So I have to spell it out for them for, for email addresses <laughs> and everything. But the name, the concept <laughs> was there when I created it. Um, but I think that's why it's so important who I work with too, is it has to, everybody has to embody that where we're all smiling through. We're all trying to make the best outcome for the clients. So Amanda, I have a question. So it's, it's the day of the wedding, right? Mm -hmm. So what does that look like for you? Like it's the morning. Yep. We're kicking it off. So usually (laughs) I come when the bride or bridesmaids or whoever's involved in that wedding are getting hair and makeup done. So they're in the middle of it and I walk in and I'm like, hey. <laughs> You're singing it. You're singing it. No, it's like with a crackle. Because um, <laughs> I didn't want to be as loud as I usually am. But I walk in and I'm like, hey guys. And then everyone's like, oh, hi. And half the people are like, who is this person walking in? And then the bride is like, oh, it's Amanda, wedding planner. And I make sure everyone has what they need at that time. Because a lot of times I'll walk in and people are like, oh, this just happened. Can can you grab some water or any something that comes up, right? So I'm making sure everyone is good. Photographer's usually there at that time too, sh- shooting some detail shots. And then I go into whatever's on my timeline. So whether that means setting up or making sure um, they're get- the bridesmaids are getting into their robes or whatever else they're going to be getting dressed into for photos. 
And then it depends on whether we're at a hotel or their house or at the venue or ready, but we'll get transportation together if ne- if necessary. And we'll go to the venue and the photographer and I will scout a little bit, see what looks good that day for cause sometimes <laughs> you go a month before and it looks good that tree and that tree does not look good today. <laughs> So we see what would be good for the whole wedding party and family shots and individual. And then I'm making sure the bridal suite and groom suite, I do not forget about the groom. So making sure everyone has what they need and everything looks good. Talking to the venue, seeing if things are starting to get set up with the florist. Um, Usually about then my assistant will get there and I'll see if the assistant can, whether it's escort cards or setting something up for me. And uh, a lot of times I'll have a, a headset, walkie-talkie, with the assistant. And it depends on the size of the wedding, of course. Um, and one person will go with the groom and the party, and one will go with the bride. Usually I'm with the bride, just making sure everything stays flowing really nicely. And if we're running over with photography, then I'm talking to the next person, whatever. So it keeps it flowing. It keeps the day going. But also I have good communication with the photographer if we are going way over. Um, And then making sure the room is set up beautifully before anyone goes in the room, the bride and bride or bride and groom or groom and groom, take a look in and make sure it looks great to them. The ceremony is set up if it's there. It's hard because sometimes the ceremony is at a different location. Sometimes it's at the same. And in making sure the officiant has what they need and everybody is just on top of it. Mm-hmm. The rings. The, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the rings are, that's at the previous house or hotel, I'm making sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then that once we have everyone set up for ceremony, I'm helping guests go to their seat as well. And lining people, lining everyone up for the wedding. And then during cocktail hour, it's so funny because a lot of venues are like, oh, no. I'm like, do you need help getting everyone into the reception? They're like, no, 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 I'm good. And then like five minutes later, I'm like, so do you want some help getting getting them in? Because nobody's moving. And <laughs> I mean, I don't say it like that, but I'm like, do you want some help? And they're like- A gentle nudge. Yeah. I'm like, they're like, okay, we could. And then like, I'm like, okay, everybody. <laughs> Like sometimes you have to be a little bit more because the reception starting and the client wants that reception time. They're paying for that reception time. They get a few hours. They want to dance. They want to drink. They want to And it's easy to get caught up in the moment and lose track of time. It's very easy. So you are the one moving things along, staying to the the schedule as much as possible. I had one one wedding where um, the person leading everything at the venue left two weeks before. So a new person was hired and they didn't know really what they were doing. So I couldn't imagine if I wasn't there and they were counting on that venue alone to lead them through the day. So nobody knew because I worked with them. We made it happen. But I thought about that right after I was like, oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. And the makeup artist and I were like, oh my goodness, good thing. Good thing I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so many components that make yes. up the day of. Is that the biggest challenge? Pretty much just time and keeping things like flowing well? I don't think that's not my biggest challenge because I'm like you, like very organized. And um, no, I don't. I think just the flexibility part of it is is probably mine. But but I, you know, you, you tell yourself you're going to be flexible and it, you just make it happen. I'm a make it happen person. I don't believe in word can't. I tell my kids that all the time too. There's no can't. Like if they say can't, I'm like, I don't know what that means. I'm sorry. So I can and I will and they're going to have a fantastic day. So that's all there is to it. So then through the reception, I'm making sure the speeches are happening when they need to, if there's any extra entertainment, um, the band or the DJ, that the photographers have what they need and video because sometimes that changes. And then the cake or, you know, any other component, cultural components that come into play. And then at the end of the night that the couple has what they need to go home. Because sometimes some venues are very good at setting everything up, the piece slice of cake and their shoes and everything put in one box. And some need assistance. So making sure that when they leave, they're not leaving without their gifts or 
anything else that that they sh- shouldn't leave there. <laughs> oh, that's something I never even thought about yeah. is getting the cake and getting mm-hmm. all of the gifts gifts organized. Yeah. So you're there from start to finish. Yes. The day of. Yes. You come in during prep. You leave with the end of the guests. Yes. You're there. And sometimes even after. I like to make sure the guests get on the shuttles, too, if they're going back to the hotel. I do the hotel transportation um, and the hotel bookings, blocks, and everything, too, with the full planning. So making sure that everyone's getting on. And I'll guide them also because people are sitting around and I know that the transportation is going to leave and that's going to be it. And they'll be stuck calling an Uber or a cab or anything. So I guide them towards that too. I, I'm actually very big into intermingling with guests if I feel like it's necessary. So like I said, with body language, I watch. I want to make sure the guests are enjoying themselves too. So sometimes you have a table who's, they're just sitting there and everybody else is dancing. And you can tell some people like don't really want to talk to each other. So I'll go over and just be like, or don't oh. know how to talk to each other. That too. Yeah. Sure. So I'll be like, oh, do you guys like to dance? And not that I'm, you know, just do you want to get up and dance? And just sometimes facilitate be like, some yeah. type of a conversation. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And just to help them out a little bit. And when, remember when the guests are enjoying themselves, the, the couple's enjoying themselves even more too. So just being that person. I say I'm your person. Like, your spouse is supposed to be your person. Well, I'm also that extra third wheel. (laughs) Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. I'm your third wheel during the planning Mm -hmm. process. And then after um, everything, after the event or wedding, then I keep up with my clients and keep that relationship going. And it's sad. It's like, I'm so happy at the end. And then I'm also a little bit sad because we won't be talking as much. And I won't know everything that's going on. But we do keep now social media, you keep up with each other. And um, and then if somebody else gets married or has bar bat mitzvah or any type of big event. Do you get a big thank you at the end? Like what's the nicest thing a client has ever done for you in the end? It's more about, for me, it's more about words. So a letter or saying something to me, well, I love referrals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, of course. <laughs> Business I, growth. <laughs> I love when people want to shout it to the world that they've worked with me and have had a great experience. Um, but I had, you know, a few weeks ago, someone said, like, this was better than I could have ever imagined or expected. Mm-hmm. That's and the And they meant it. And it's oh, just, yeah, it's no, just they, feeling that, yeah. that sincerity and, yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And getting cute little notes. Sometimes I'll get cute little notes like to the best planner in the world, like in the mail. It's like sweet, sweet notes. And I'm all about, I'm very sentimental. That's my Pisces part. Mm-hmm. I'm Pisces and Aries, yeah. everyone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the sweet and, and appreciation. So I try to show appreciation as much as I can yeah. too. Yeah. A little I'll send kindness. little gifts sometimes. Yeah. Like yeah. if I think of somebody or... You know, I, just, I don't know. I think these little things. They go a long way. They do. They do. I had a, a little bag of Elmo's and Grover's waiting for me one day in a sweet little note um, from a client. I'll never forget that. It's so it wasn't sweet. just the bag of Elmo's. But no. It was just the fact that they, you know, they were. It's thoughtful. It was just, yeah. Right. They remembered I had a baby and, right. you know, they. So sweet. Just the best. Yeah. Those types of things just make you. It's just, um, yeah. 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 It's personal. more than like if you got a like a real big, yeah. huge gift or something. It's it's about them caring and them appreciating you and what you did for mm-hmm. them or what you're doing. And mm-hmm. yeah. It's it's very human. Yeah. Just getting to know the person. You yes. know, it's not just a job. Yeah. You know, um if this was just if if this was just a job, I'm sure half of us wouldn't do it. It would never no. Mm-hmm. Because it's so much work. It is especially having your own business is so much work. It's everything you see is half of it. And then the behind the scenes, the websites, the newsletters, the the growth, the advertising, like there's so much that, yeah, I mean, you have to really have a passion for it and really want, want it. Jean and I have this ongoing conversation about different types of weddings. Jean's wedding was over the top, her dream come true in a day. Mine added a lot of stress because I definitely had a vision, but I didn't have the means to be able to have the wedding that was in my head. So for somebody who had a wedding similar to mine, total micro budget, planned everything out, super resourceful, how would 
your services affect somebody like me who perhaps it doesn't have what what advice would you give somebody to me who doesn't have the money to be able to hire you for the month of coordination oh who's not hiring me okay correct we don't just rely on pinterest like actually think of some creative ideas um to make it unique and you have to be super resourceful to be able to bring in different pieces that not everybody has. So whether that means a unique kind of sign. But I would I would really say invest in something that's a statement. So it doesn't just look like all these little pieces that don't cost a lot of money. You know, you can have those. So I'm like that person who I'll mix like Chanel with like Forever 21. You know, it's like yeah. you, you mix those yeah. because it automatically elevates your look, mm-hmm. right? When You're you, drawn to that. Yes. And then everything You is- don't have to spend on everything. So spend on something that means a lot to you. So if you know you want to take a lot of pictures sitting down um, at your reception at dinner, you want this really big statement piece behind you, the two of you, then you spend it there and you make that wow statement. But then the rest you do like candle lighting or something simple. But if you can go all out, obviously- you have those walls everywhere and you have mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> a ton of extras. Uh, y- you have to work within your means and not stress out about not being able to have the same type of wedding as somebody else. Because who cares what somebody else can do? This is your situation. This is, you make the best of it and you make it about you. It's, it has to be your style. So your style might not even be having that lavish wedding. You know, you have to think about it. Like, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But where can you spend the money? And then where can you see like, oh, I don't really need to just because everybody else is. That's a great point. So, Amanda. Yes. Smiling Through the Chaos of Wedding Planning. Yes. Your book. Amazon bestseller. Yes. Another thing to add to your resume. <laughs> <laughs> I just needed another one. Um, no, I really actually saw from a, a friend getting married that a lot of the wedding planning books were very task oriented and very boring and dry. And you had to get like five different books to get all the information. So instead, I created a book that is very easy to read, simplistic. You can read one chapter a night. It's like three pages per chapter, four pages, five pages, you know, a few pages. And it's in your voice. Yes. So it's it's less formal. I have little jokes. And I'm it. looking at it right just... now. You're so cute on this cover. Thanks. So wait, smiling through the chaos of wedding planning, yes. your guide to wedding, to planning the perfect day. Amanda Dawn Hughes. Yes. How long did this take? <sighs> I did it in, I think, three months. I did it every night until like 1 a.m. For hours I was editing and writing and it actually was very cool on a personal level too because my older son never cared about writing and then he saw me writing a book and he wanted to write oh, wow. more. And now he's a much better writer. Lead by so oh, how cool. cool. Yeah. How it was, cool. It was really interesting. Um, but when it came out and it became an Amazon bestseller, it was so exciting. And yeah. I, and it came out December of last year. So just over a year old. And within the book, do you talk about from the moment they're engaged forward, all of the different avenues that they're going, basically the, the same things that we've talked in mm-hmm. using your services are most of them t- covered in your book? Yeah, I talk about vendors a lot, like what to do with invitations and a style, what different styles you can have, what why you should hire this type of photographer versus this type and just the different options. It's giving them options. It's it's guiding them to some extent, but I like to give options. That's how I work. I'm very much about brainstorming and working together. Not- but it's not so vast. There's still directions. Yes, to it. yes, definitely. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely do. And for everyone listening, please make sure to follow Amanda on Facebook at Smiling Through Chaos and Instagram at STC. Dot event and wedding planning. Or you can visit her website, smilingthroughchaos.com. Please make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Live Picture Studios. Email us at podcast at livepicturestudios.com or hashtag LPS podcast with questions or anything that you'd like to share. Bye. Happy planning. See you later. Oh. <laughs>